Neil Battaglia, SaxStation.com. So there's an app called Duolingo. It's been around for a while. I think I started using it maybe about 12 years ago. And you can learn different languages. It's probably ideal if you know English already, and then you can learn other languages, but it actually works for people who don't know English for learning English and other languages as well from a different perspective. Two of the newest things that they've added are math and music. And being a musician, I figured I'd check out the music. I also checked out the math, but that's a different story. In the music course, it's similar in a lot of ways to the language courses. So basically, I think there are more different levels. There are basically 69 different levels, and each like little circle is like one different activity. And you have songs kind of in the, in the middle. In the very first levels, you start off with just three notes. So you have a limited option, and you try and listen for things. You try and hear rhythms. You try and play along on a phone or on a tablet and you kind of learn different things. Sometimes notes or rhythms are hidden and you have to kind of drag and drop and figure out what should go there. Sometimes you pick notes from lowest to highest in ascending order and that might be based on what they look like on the staff. It might be what you hear. So it has some ear training. It also kind of starts to teach you how to read music. Much like the language courses, you can skip between the different levels. If you feel like you can kind of test out of a level, you can go to that level and try sort of a short quiz and see if you can pass it, and then you can go to those levels. So basically what I did was I started at the first level, I tried out some different things. That's when you're using three notes. I thought it had some interesting variety of exercises for learning music. I've known how to read music for a while, but I think if you're starting to learn how to read music, this could be pretty useful. And the songs you have to play, they're not terribly difficult, and you kind of follow along. Sometimes they have backgrounds that you play with, and you learn how to play something that's like a piano, or at least the setup of a piano, which is on a keyboard of a phone or a tablet. I was using a tablet most of the time, but I did also try a phone because I figured that's actually probably what more people will be using. The early songs are pretty approachable. I got through them without too much trouble. I skipped ahead to level 22 and I tried that. It was still pretty manageable. I skipped ahead to level 33. I tried that. I skipped ahead to like the 50s and I skipped ahead to the final level. I was able to pass all the little tests to skip ahead. So those weren't really a big problem. But some of the songs at a harder level are actually kind of tough to play. I will, I will preface this by saying I'm not really a great piano player. I know how to play a little bit of piano and I've been playing music for a while. But on a, on a phone or on a tablet, it's kind of harder to play a piano than it would be if you had an actual keyboard or actual piano. So when I started to get into the later levels with the songs like Battle Hymn of the Republic, I kind of struggled that a lot. When you do struggle though, it kind of just rewinds back to where you started messing up. And then you get to kind of do a piece at a time. And then it also has some things built in where it will find a measure that you didn't play very well. And it might make an exercise out of just that one measure or those two measures and you'll like loop it. So you might play it once and twice and three times and that's your new exercise based on what you did. So there's some sort of personalization involved in the lessons. If you skip ahead to a new level, you can access all of the previous levels, but they say review on them. Because the review, you get less points, and if you care about that, then maybe you don't want to necessarily skip ahead if that's a concern. Another thing within Duolingo that I like is you can follow people, and there's like leagues and scoreboards, and you can kind of get motivated a little bit in sort of this sort of game-like fashion. So maybe you're trying to get more points than your friend, maybe you're trying to do a certain goal within the week or the day. There's different kind of games involved. There's a lot of different exercises within Duolingo music. So sometimes you're focused on rhythm, sometimes it's more about the notes. When you're playing songs, it scores your pitches, it also scores your rhythm. It will also tell you in real time if your notes are right on, if they're a little bit late, a little bit early, so you kind of can see that as you're playing. Things in Duolingo music progressively get harder. It goes fairly gradually, but eventually it gets quite a bit harder than it was at the very beginning. I think that if you go through the levels one at a time, you'll probably kind of get used to the system on the touchscreen. And a lot of that will transfer to a real piano or a real keyboard, but it does feel different. So keep that in mind. I would say that on a real piano or keyboard, it's going to be easier to play than it is on a touchscreen, especially if your touchscreen is on a phone. On Duolingo in general, you can send feedback and they do update things pretty often. I imagine they're going to expand what they're doing. Quite a while ago when I was starting to use Duolingo, I was using it to review Spanish and I went through all the levels that they had available. So I went through the entire tree. At this point, there's a lot more material that you can actually access for Spanish and for all the other languages. So they are working on it. You can use this app for free. You will see ads if you do that. And you can also pay a fairly low price and remove all the ads and get a couple of other benefits um, with their super, it's called Super Duolingo. So you might consider that if you like it. 
You can use it for languages as well as music and then math, and they'll probably just keep adding different topics. Overall, I like what they're doing. If they could add some new features or change some things around, I imagine it will just keep getting better. One thing that could be really good is if it had a microphone interact with you playing an actual instrument, because then you'd actually be playing a keyboard or maybe potentially another instrument. But as it is, I like what they're doing. You can start to learn to read music if you don't know how to yet. You can work on reading rhythms, finding pitches, and just learning some different facets of music theory. So you learn about like flats and sharps and key signatures, different things like that. I think I might actually go back to the beginning and work through all the levels, but I did kind of skip around to try and figure out where it actually got to at this point and how useful it might be.